Greetings, my friends. This week we are in lab number three, and we are going to talk about array lists, um, classes, and array lists of objects, which is going to be interesting. So let's start off. We're going to fire up IntelliJ, and we're going to create a new project as we always do. And here we are with just the default. So in order to create an array list, generally you're going to say array list, and then you're going to give it angle brackets and the type of the array list that you want. So if I'm wanting to create an array list of numbers, then weirdly I would type integer in here, and I would call it my, my array list equals new array list, and I would again put in integer, and then in put in a set of parentheses and a semicolon. Now, this requires you to import Java Util array list. And you notice that IntelliJ did that automatically for me. As soon as I typed in an array list, it magically put this here. It wasn't here when I started coding. So always make sure that you put in that. Uh, this is just IntelliJ being nice to you and filling it in for you, but you should get used to the idea of making sure that you import all the uh, things that you need. All right, so this creates for me an array list of integers, which works very similarly to an array, but the main difference is that array lists can grow and shrink. So if I want to put something into the array list, which I called my array list, um, I would say my array list dot add, and then I can put in the number seven in there, and that works fine. My array list dot add, and the number da da da. Right, and so that puts two things in there. If I wanted to print them out, I would use a either a for loop or a for each loop. So I'm going to use a for int i equals zero, i less than two, i plus plus. And I'm going to say system.out.println, yikes. And then I'm going to ask it to print my array list dot get parentheses i. Okay, so that's one big difference. So I'm just going to run this while I'm talking. The big difference between an array and an array list is that in an array, you use the square brackets when you're trying to access individual cells. There was cell 0, cell 1, cell 2. In an array list, you still have cell 0, cell 1, and cell 2, but the difference is that the array list, you don't access it with the square brackets. You have to call the method get in order to get something back out of the array list. So you can see what this did was it printed out the two lines that I put in there, the 7 and the 58, 255. If I add in a third thing and run it again, uh, we'll put in 42, uh, the answer to life in the universe. Then uh, now I'm going to see three lines printed out. My Actually, I'm not, because I only did the first two lines. I specifically set that to um, 2, which is not what I should have done. All right, so if I want this to be a bit more dynamic, that will now print out the three. But rather than hard coding the three, what might have made more sense was to do my array list dot size, which is going to tell me how big the array list is. In this case, it's going to return three because there are three items in there. They're in cell zero, one, and two, but the length is three. So I'm still doing i less than effectively three, and that's going to print out the same exact thing. Instead of using a for loop, I might have used a for each loop, in which case I do four. And then in this case, the thing that I'm getting out each time is an integer. So I'm going to say int x colon my array list. All right. And so now what's going to happen is this for loop automatically is going to figure out how big the list, the list is. And the for each loop is going to go as many times as there are cells in the array list, which in this case is three. And each time through, it's going to take the next cell out of the array list and store it in the variable x. So if I wanted to print each of the things, I would simply print x, because that's what I called the variable that it's going to use each time through. And just to prove that that's doing the same thing, I'm going to comment out uh, the previous loop. So note that that is, yikes, it automatically filled in the closing one for me. Notice that that loop is now automatically turned off because I have commented it out. That's how you do comments. And so when I run this, it's going to produce the exact same output as before, but I didn't have to worry about how big the array was and whatnot. So the for, loop, for each loop is very handy because it automatically does that for you. All right, so that's how you make an array list and how you add things to it, how you get things back out of it, how you see the size of it, and how you iterate through it using either a for loop or a for each loop. So the only thing that we breezed over at the beginning of all that was when I created the array list, I typed in the word integer there. And you might be scratching your head saying, wouldn't you have typed in int? Because isn't that the type? So it would seem to make sense that what I would have actually typed was this. Um, but that's not what I typed. 
Um, and so the reason that that's underlining, well, I'm going to put in my array list two. I just name it something different. But the reason it's underlining that is because what you have to pass in those angle brackets must be an object. An int is not an object. Car is not an object. Float, double, none of those are objects. Those are types. So what Java did was they wrapped each of the types in an object that has a very similar name, which is a little confusing. For int, the object that wraps over int is called integer with a capital I. For almost all of the other ones, it's simply just going to be the word itself, but with a capital letter. So if you wanted an array list of floats, you would do that. Um, note how it's a capital F instead of a lowercase. Likewise, double is a capital D double. Um, car is a capital C, car, and so on and so forth. Actually, it's character. I lied to you. Um, there we go. Yeah, and these two have to match the two sides. Um, you will see that Java will often underline, or sorry, IntelliJ will often underline this and will tell you that this really doesn't need to be here. And you can see that when I'm over putting my mouse over it, it's saying you can simply replace this with angle brackets. It's implicit that the second must be the same. So why are you having to type it twice? It works either way. This is a modern thing that IntelliJ is doing for you. Um, all right. So if you wanted to have an array list of objects where you define the objects, then you would have to define the class for the object first and then make an array list of them. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, erase all of this and I'm going to go back to where we were when we started here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a new class. And you will remember that you do that by coming over here and then right clicking and saying, oops, not there, right here, right clicking and saying new Java class. I'm going to make a class called student. And students are going to have a couple of attributes. So string name int ksu id and you're going to have major which is going to be string all right capitalized one but not the others yay for consistency i'm going to go ahead and give myself a constructor so public student and that's going to take in a name and it's going to take in a ksu id and it's going to take in a new, uh, sorry, a, a major. All right, and that should be a capital S. And I don't know why I put a semicolon there. I meant to put curly braces. All right, so inside of here, I'm going to simply say name is equal to new name. And I'm going to say uh, KSUID is equal to new KSUID. And I'm going to say major. Sometimes tab complete is really helpful. Sometimes tab complete gets you in trouble. Major equals new major. All right, so that's a general constructor. I now have a class that sort of works. I'm going to go ahead and give myself an overwrite of two string just so that I can actually um, see the output of this student if I ever needed to print them, because I'm going to need that in a moment. So it's going to be public uh, string to string. And what I'm going to have in here is return student name plus, uh, what is it called, name, uh, plus uh, KSUID, KSUID plus, um, OK, so that's a very basic um, overwrite of two string. All right, so over in main, we know that now that I've defined all of this, I certainly could create a single student. And I can pass in their name. So their name is going to be Jane, and their KSU ID is 123456, and their major is going to be CS. So that's Jane, and then I could create a second student. And this one is going to be Paula. And her ID is going to be some random set of numbers. And her major is going to be software engineering. OK, so that creates two students. Now, if I wanted to create an array list of students, how would I go about doing that? Well, that's going to be pretty easy. I'm going to say array list. And then in the angle brackets, I'm going to say student, which means that each cell in there is going to hold one student. My students equals new array list. Um, 
So there we go. Now, how do I put a student in there? Well, I could say my students, which is my array list name, dot add um, student one. And that sticks a student in there. My students dot add student two. Cool. So now I'm going to do a for each loop to print them out. What I'm getting back each time from each cell is a student. So I'm going to say studnt. We'll call it X again, which is a terrible name. Don't, don't be like me, kids. Um, and then we're going to say it's from my students. And we're going to just print that out. And so that's going to convert each student. It's going to be pulled out of the array list. And then they're going to get converted to a string because I'm using a system.out.print line, which forces them into a string. So it's having to take each thing that it got back convert that into a string, and then print it. When it does a convert to a string, that's going to implicitly call toString, which is going to give me this output. So that's the magic of toString, which hopefully that makes sense. So that's how you make an array list of students, an array list of objects effectively. It's how you would access and individually change any of them. If you were going to want to change the name of one of the students, um, are the student names currently set as public? Well, I didn't specify public or private, so Java defaulted them to public which is not great, but I'll go ahead and force them to public real quick just to prove a point. Um, if I wanted to, oh uh, goodness, that is not where I meant to type the word public. Let's do that in the right place. All right. I meant to do that up here when I was defining them. All right, so if I wanted to access any one of these individual attributes inside of the array, how would I do that? Well back over in my main program, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, and I'm just going to change one of the um, KSUIDs. So I'm going to say my student dot get position one, which is the second student dot KSUID is now going to be equal to, uh, let's set it to zero, zero, well, actually, let's set it to 100, just so that we can see. Now I'm going to run the program. And what you're going to see is the ID for the second student, that's the student in position one in the array, was now set to 100. And so that's how I was able to do that. In addition to the get method, you might also run into the set method, and there's also a remove method, which are useful for array lists as well. But those should get you started on today's lab. I wish you the best of luck, and make sure you get your lab and your assignment knocked out. Ask your GTA if you have any questions, and I'll see you next week.